Hello, my name is Erin, and I'm a developer relations engineer on the Privacy Sandbox team here at Google. In this video, I will show you how to get started with testing the Attribution Reporting API. Before watching this video, you should get familiar with the Attribution Reporting API by reading the design proposal, which is linked below in the video description. The design proposal provides an overview of the API and its uses. In this video, you will learn the basics of the Attribution Reporting API by setting up and running the provided sample app and server spec. To do this, you will set up a development environment for the Privacy Sandbox, mock an attribution reporting server, register a source and a trigger in the attribution reporting sample app, receive an event level and aggregate report. Let's get started. Let's begin by setting up your development environment to use the Privacy Sandbox. First, you'll need to have Android Studio installed. You will also need to have the latest versions of the Privacy Sandbox SDK and device images installed. To do this, open up the SDK Manager in Android Studio, download the latest Privacy Sandbox SDK and device images, and click Apply. Developers may test using a test device, but for this example, you will need to use an emulator that has been created with the Privacy Sandbox emulator image. To create one, open up the Virtual Device Manager. Click the Create Device button. Privacy Sandbox APIs are shipped only with the device definition with the Play Store. This is indicated by the icon in the Play Store column. Here you can see that the Pixel 4 has a device definition, so that's what I will choose. Click Next, and it takes you to the System Image page. Select the Privacy Sandbox system image that you downloaded earlier, then click Next again. Give your device a new name if you wish, I'll call mine Attribution Test Device, and click Finish to create your emulator. Next, go to the Privacy Sandbox Samples GitHub page. Click the Attribution Reporting folder. Here, there are three folders that you can use to run an end-to-end -end example of attribution reporting. The first, Measurement Ad Tech Server, is a Spring Boot-based application that you can use to run a standalone microservice. The Measurement Ad Tech Server Spec folder contains the OpenAPI JSON specs that can be used to mock a server for testing, and the Measurement Sample App folder contains the code for your sample Android app. For this example, you will be mocking a server for testing. Click into the Measurement Add Tech Server Spec folder, then open up the Measurement Add Tech Server Spec JSON file. Click the Raw button at the top of the file contents, then right-click the page and select Save As. There are many tools online you can use to mock a server using OpenAPI for testing purposes. For this demonstration, I'm going to be using Postman, but feel free to use whichever tool you're most comfortable with. Import the Measurement Ad Tech Server Spec JSON file you just saved into your tool of choice. In your tool, you'll be able to view the Measurement Ad Tech Server Spec as a collection of requests. Let's take a look at each of the endpoints. Here, you have an example endpoint to register a source, such as a click or a view, and an example endpoint to register a trigger, such as a conversion. You can call just an endpoint or add one or more optional parameters to the URL. If you're using the provided example server, the endpoint does not need to be enrolled, but for your own server, you will need to enroll your endpoints. In this example, let's say you want to pass in campaign information associated with the source. So you add the optional parameter for an identifier to the end of the register source URL, as shown highlighted in yellow. Let's say you also want to add conversion information associated with the trigger. So you add an optional parameter for an identifier at the end of the register trigger URL, also highlighted in yellow. You also have an endpoint, which will be used to deliver an event report, an endpoint to deliver an aggregate report. These reports are available only after the user views, clicks, or converts. You will simulate those events a little later in this demo. Now that you've walked through a mock server setup, let's look at the provided example app. Go ahead and clone the Privacy Sandbox GitHub repo. After you have cloned the GitHub repo, open up the Measurement Sample App project in Android Studio. Go ahead and run the project on the emulator you created earlier. The first thing you need to do is configure the server URL in the sample app with the URL of the mock server that you just created. To do this, click the overflow menu in the upper right-hand corner of the sample app and select server URL. Then open up your tool of choice to view your mock server. My mock URL looks something like this. Copy your mock URL, and then switch back to your emulator window. Enter in the mock URL you just copied. An easy way to do this is by using your terminal and typing the command adb shell input text, and then the URL that you want to use. Once your URL is in the text field, click Save. 
Let's look at the screens of the sample app. The first screen represents what could happen when a user sees or clicks an advertisement in your application, otherwise known as registering a source. In this example, let's say the user has clicked the advertisement, so to simulate that, you will click the Register Click Event button. You'll see a toast that lets us know that the API has been called. You can configure the source register ID to be another value if you'd like, but let's leave it at one for this example. Now let's say that after clicking the advertisement, the user went on to purchase the product being advertised. The tab on the bottom right shows a screen that represents what happens when a conversion, like the one in this example, is made, otherwise known as registering a trigger. To simulate the conversion, click the register trigger button and see the toast confirming the API call. You could configure the conversion reg registration ID to be another value, but in this example, let's leave it at one. Now that you've seen where sources and triggers are registered in the UI, let's take a look at the sample app code. The measurement view model class hosts the methods you need in order to use the attribution reporting API to register our sources and triggers. Here in the measurement view models register source function, you use the injected measurement manager object to invoke its register source function. You are passing at the base URL, which is concatenated with backslash source as defined in the measurement ad text server spec, and an identifier as a parameter. You also pass in an optional input event. You also have the register trigger function, where you invoke measurement manager's register trigger function and pass it the base URL, this time concatenated with backslash trigger as defined in the measurement ad text server spec and an identifier as a parameter. Now let's look at the UI. In the source fragment of the sample app, you invoke the measurement view model's register source function in the click listener that is attached to the register click event button. You also pass the source registration ID that you can configure in the text field of this page. Similarly, in the trigger fragment, you invoke measurement view model's register trigger function in the click listener that is attached to the register trigger button and the conversion ID that you can configure in the text field of this page. Now that your hypothetical user has clicked through an advertisement and purchased the item, you have registered the source and the trigger of that purchase, you'll want to receive an event level and aggregate report of these interactions. These reports are generated in a time window that is set in the attribution service. You can read more about expiry windows in the design proposal. In this example, your reports will be generated in two days. You can see this in the register source response header in the measurement ad tech server spec JSON file. You don't want to actually wait two days to finish your test, so you'll simulate the time window. You will need the ADB commands that you can find in the readme file of the sample app. First, you open up the terminal and run the first command to force the attribution job service. Then, you open the emulator window and click Settings, System, Date and Time, and untoggle Set Time automatically. Click Date and change the date to be three days forward. Return to your terminal window and run the second ADB command to force the event level reporting job service. Finally, run the third ADB command to force the aggregate reporting job service. Then return to your tool of choice to look at the traffic on your mock server. Here you can see the calls you have made to register source and trigger. You also see the event level and aggregate reports returned by the attribution server mock that we set up earlier. Let's take a closer look at the event level report. In the request body, attribution destination refers to the app that the event happened in. In this case, your measurement sample app. The source event ID refers to the ad which led to this report. The trigger data field holds the trigger metadata, which is low fidelity data for the clicks or views. The source type refers to whether the interaction is a click or a view. The value navigation is shown here, which corresponds to a click. The randomized trigger rate is a noise parameter for adding noise to event reports. Let's also take a look at the aggregate report. In the request body, you see the attribution destination, which also refers to where the event happened, in this case, your sample app. Also take a look at the reporting origin, which refers to the ad tech URL where the report was sent. And that concludes our introduction to the Attribution Reporting API. You should now have an understanding of how to test the Attribution Reporting API, set up source and trigger registration, and receive event level and aggregate reports.
Now that you've seen the Attribution Reporting API in action, I encourage you to check out the integration guide, which is linked below in the video description. This guide will provide step-by-step -step guidance on implementing the Attribution Reporting API with regards to your tech stack and use cases. We appreciate your feedback as we continue to iterate on the privacy-preserving APIs. If you have any feedback for us as you go through testing, please submit it via the link below. Thanks for watching.